Hey there, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect, and defend against a little-known registry key that can be abused to launch code whenever any Microsoft Office app is launched. The Procmon tool, part of the SysInternals suite, provides detailed information about running processes. Here it's configured to show all events associated with winword.exe. And, if we launch Word, the list is quickly populated with tens of thousands of individual events, listing file and registry access attempts, network connections, thread creation and termination, and so on. A little way down this list, there's a request to the Office Test Registry key, which is returned as not found, as it's not defined for this user. This key is intended to be used to connect to a code profiling system to analyze the performance of Office apps. However, some very clever researchers and attackers discovered that it can be abused to launch any arbitrary code, thus providing a method of persistence once initial access to a machine has been achieved. An attacker wishing to abuse this feature must first create their payload. This simple piece of code creates a DLL, which launches a new EXE whenever the DLL gets loaded. And in this case, the EXE is created using Metasploit's MSF Venom command, to generate an executable which, when called, will establish a reverse shell back to the attacker-controlled machine. The attacker can then launch a listener to wait for connections from their victims. On the victim machine, the attacker copies the malicious payload to a new folder, then creates a set of new registry keys under HKEY CURRENT USER SOFTWARE MICROSOFT. First, one called OFFICE TEST, then a subkey called SPECIAL, and then another named PERF. Finally, the default value for this final subkey is set to the malicious DLL payload. Note that this key is in the HKEY CURRENT USER hive, so that means it can be set with a standard low privilege non-admin user account, although any changes only apply to the currently logged on user. An equivalent key exists in HKEY LOCAL MACHINE which requires administrator privileges to set, but is effective over every user account on the machine. With the malware now in place, the victim just needs to launch any Office app, in this case Microsoft Word. Everything appears to be working normally, but the attacker's code has been quietly executed and has successfully established a remote shell back to the attacker. This code could of course do anything. A particularly crafty example could be to show a fake Office style login box to capture the victim's Office 365 username and password. Detecting the presence of the Office test key is pretty trivial. You just need to examine the relevant location in the registry under HKEY CURRENT USER, SOFTWARE, MICROSOFT, and see if it's present or not. Don't forget to also check the same key under HKEY LOCAL MACHINE too. Alternatively, recent versions of AUTORUNS, another SysInternals tool, will detect the presence of the key. Just launch the tool, wait for it to finish collecting data, and any use of the test key will be flagged under the Office section of the user interface. Another option is to implement registry monitoring, so as to generate an audit event whenever the test key is set or modified by an attacker. I've covered how to configure this in previous videos, so I shan't repeat myself here, but I will leave a link in the video description. There's no way of preventing Office apps from checking for the presence of the test key and launching the reference DLL. However, some careful registry permissions can neutralize the potential for abuse by preventing the test key from being defined. On this machine here, which is yet to be compromised, the Office test key does not exist. Logged in as an administrator, we can go ahead and create the top level key ourselves in the target user's registry hive, and then disable inheritance so we can define some custom permissions. We can then modify the target user's permissions from full control to read. This prevents the user's account from being abused to add the special and perf subkeys required to perform the attack. Note that if you try to do this under a normal user account, the owner of the key would be that of the user, not an administrator. 
That means it would then be possible for the user to undo this protection by updating their permissions back to full control. Switching back to the user's account, we can verify that this is working as expected by attempting to create a new subkey and receiving an access denied message. Likewise, any attempt to add back full control permissions to circumvent the protection is also blocked. This isn't a particularly scalable solution. However, these steps can be automated. For example, the following PowerShell script, which can then be pushed out to workstations via GPO or logon script. Check the video description for a link to download a copy of this code. But that about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting and defending against the abuse of the office test key, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.